Hello, welcome to this clip going through how to determine the formulae of uh, hydrated iron 2 sulfate. Um, it's a specimen paper, as you can probably make out from the specimen coming across the screen at the bottom, from the OCR specimen materials on their past papers um, web page. So, obviously, you may not have done this particular uh, practical at uh, college, um, so I'm just going to do the clip as if um, I've done it. So I, I did do it actually and got some results. So I'm going to put my results in. So where it says you'll be assessed on the consistency of your titration results. And the accuracy of your final answer, obviously because you didn't carry this out, that's not going to be part of the homework that I set for this clip. So what you will be doing though is calculating the value of x. So my own results can be used for this. So let's have a quick look at the uh, procedure. So moving the page down, you can see that you've got three chemicals are supplied. So these chemicals are used for all standard uh, iron 2 plus MnO4 minus redox titrations. Uh, so they are, uh, they've been risk assessed by OCR at this concentration. Uh, so the sulfuric acid at one mole per decimeter cubed is treated as irritant. Uh, hydrated iron sulfate would be harmful uh, in solid form, but 0 0.0100 mole per decimeter cubed of potassium manganate wouldn't have a risk assessment um, rating at this point. And that's because the action that's been taken would be the use of a very low concentration. So the first thing you'll need to do is to calculate the mass of FeSO4.xH2O used. And moving the page down a bit, uh, all of the other things that you're told to do are actually practical based. So we can go on to the next page now where you can see the rough data that I, I've managed to obtain so you can calculate the mass of iron sulfate used. Now I've completely forgotten when preparing the, um, the PDF for this is that I'd actually worked this out for you. But what you do need to do is uh, do the rough titer. So obviously if you've uh, done this for your homework, um, you can check what, you're, what you've done against the workings that we're about to do now. So moving the page down, so you can see that the two uh, concordant titers, I'm going to go for Titer 1 and Titer 2. But it doesn't mean you couldn't also have gone for 20.00 and 19.90. So the next thing to look at is the most significant hazard in your procedure and any precautions taken to minimise that hazard. So I've brought in the hazard information from the previous page. So we can just bring that down a bit and uh, make it a bit bigger. So there's two possible ones you could choose here. Um, definitely don't worry about the potassium manganate as being the most significant hazard in your procedure. But I would say that harmful is more significant than irritant. So I'd say the iron hydrated, the, the hydrated iron 2 sulfate. So some common sense approach like wearing gloves and rinsing any spillages by wiping with damp and paper towel. And it'd be no harm to put in some kind of common sense approach like washing your hands after the practical. So let's move on to the next part. So in this part I'm going to use the results that I got. So my mean titer was 20.05 centimetres cubed. So using number of moles equals concentration times volume, that gives us 2.005 times 10 to the minus 4. So taking the fact that 25 centimetres cubed sample is titrated, um, I multiply the number of moles that I've got there times 10. So we need to do two things. First of all, use the mole ratio in the redox equation, which is 1 to 5. And secondly, remember that the sample that we've just titrated was one-tenth of the original solution. So what that means is you need to take the moles of MnO4 minus 
and actually multiply them by 50 to give you 1.0025 times 10 to the minus 2. So the next thing to do is to calculate the relative formula mass of our hydrated iron sulfate sample, and from that we can work out the value of x. So starting off by noticing that the number of moles of Fe2 plus is going to equal the number of moles of your anhydrous salt, you can then say that the number of moles of anhydrous salt that you've got is also 1.0025 times 10 to the minus 2. Now remembering also that our original sample was 2.78 grams, we can work out that the number of moles of your hydrated salt in that sample was also 1.0025 times 10 to the minus 2. So using the molar mass of, um, sorry, to calculate the molar mass of our hydrated salt, we take our mass of our original and we divide it by the moles that we've actually um, deduced that are present. And that gives us 277.31 grams per mole to the minus 1. So if you take from that the fact that the uh, anhydrous version would have had 151.9 grams per mole, and the MR of H2O is 18 grams per mole, then the number of moles of water would be X. So I need to move the page down a bit to make some room at this point. So it says X is 6.967, so you can round that up to 7 H2Os. So things like slight errors in my, um, my titration and things like that would have dropped it down from being 7 exactly. So that takes us to the end of this clip. Hopefully it's been a useful one just to try and reinforce our work on manganate titrations. So until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.